Welcome to the launch of Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 2000 Series 6 and 8 core CPUs. Today we have a lot of benchmarks to get through, but of course answering those most important questions first. Has the IPC improved and also what about the latency and X470s versus X370 motherboards? First off with the IPC, I did notice an improvement testing on Cinebench and also Far Cry Primal going with the 4 GHz 1800 X comparing it against the 2700 X both the 4 GHz both with the same memory speeds as well with the same sticks of memory saw an increase from 164 to 168 so those IPC claims are indeed true and also moving over to Far Cry Primal there was a little bump in FPS as well so they have improved IPC they have gone from 14 nanometer to 12 nanometer as well change the lithography up and that has enabled the CPUs in my opinion to clock on average about 200 megahertz higher and doing so with a little bit less voltage however in Thailand I also managed to test out a lot of these CPUs and found that they hit brick walls at about 4.25 gigahertz after that you had to give them a considerable amount of voltage especially on air and water to get the clocks higher even though I did manage to get one of the CPUs to 4.3 gigahertz in Thailand here at the studio the max overclock was 4.25 gigahertz however I did drop it down to 4.2 because of the diminishing returns Anyway, with that aside, is an X470 motherboard going to make a difference to performance? Not in my test. An X370 and even a B350 motherboard show the same memory clocks, at least with the XMP profiles and the SOC voltage with the same CPU, the 1600X and the 2700X across both motherboards. So no, you don't have to go out and buy a new motherboard. You can update your BIOS. However, do keep in mind with some of the X470 motherboards, they may have improved VRM designs, which may help with overclocks, especially at the higher end. And now moving on with the improvements on the Zen Plus architecture, AMD promised me at the event that there were latency reductions across the board, level one, level two, level three cache, and also the DDR4 memory latencies. And when I put the CPUs through their paces, I did indeed notice a massive reduction in the level two latency in particular. Level one didn't change so much, level three there was an improvement as well, and of course the DDR4 memory to the IMC was improved too so that was great to see however another thing that i did notice was that since these chips do in my opinion have a better integrated memory controller at least compared to my 1800x that was a last year's initial launch sample i noticed that i was able to squeeze an extra 266 megahertz on the memory so i went from 3200 with my ddr4 g skill kit to 3466 so basically AMD made promises and they delivered on them and they were very transparent about them. That is a really good thing. That's getting a lot of respect from me. But the biggest thing, of course, as I said before, those latencies, this is why I'm gonna be recommending the Ryzen CPUs here today. In my opinion, as soon as I jumped on the 2700X, I just noticed it was snappy. And that's one thing I've complained about in the past about the 1800X. I thought it wasn't as snappy as the 8700K, but this here is a true improvement and it's one that I can recommend to enthusiasts, not just for gaming, but also productivity because of those latency reductions. I don't know, for some reason, I notice it. It's one of those things. This CPU architecture feels snappy. But with that aside, let's get on with the other plethora of benchmarks that we have to get through for you guys. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. And before we get on with those gaming and productivity benchmarks, I will say the overclocks in these CPUs are enthusiast levels, what I call the sweet spot levels. I believe overclockers and enthusiasts should be having their CPUs at these levels or somewhere around these levels. So for the 2700X, 4.2 gigahertz. For the 2600X, 4.2 gigahertz. For the 1800X, 4 gigahertz. And for the 8700K, 5 gigahertz. Now the cooler we're using, H110i GT from Corsair, and we're also using a GTX 1080 Ti from Galax, and they're all at the same speeds, and the ambient temperatures were all at 25 degrees during testing. Now I did validate these results on the X470 Aorus and also the Tai Chi board, so validated on both the motherboards just to weed out any variants. And lastly, of course, for the memory, we're using two 8 gigabyte sticks from G-Skill. This is 16, 16, 16, 39 timings, so very tight timings at 3400 megahertz. Now, I did get these speeds up to 3466 on the 8700K, 2700X, and 2600X, and on the 1800X, I got up to 3.2 gigahertz due to that IMC limitations. But with that aside, let's roll those benchmarks.
And as always, the benchmarks paint the biggest picture of all. When it came to productivity, we saw the 2700X and the 2600X were absolutely flooring it and also in terms of value for money. 329 bucks, and this thing's posting up some incredible Cinebench scores, some great post rendering times in Adobe Premiere Pro, and also included the new benchmark V-Ray, which showed that the uh, 2700X is indeed winning the, out of the pack here. And so it is coming into the lower price point than the 8700K. So if productivity and saving time is something that you need, then the 2700X will provide that, especially like where the CPU is coming at. In my previous video, I was already knew I was gonna like this thing because the included Wraith Prism cooler looks really nice too. It's an RGB cooler, it managed to get the CPU up to 4.05 gigahertz. The 2600X, that's coming in at $229 comes with a Wraith Spire that can get it up to 3.8 gigahertz. Now the Wraith Stealth, I did manage to test this because this is the cooler coming in with the Ryzen 5 2600 non-X and that could only get this up to 3.4 gigahertz. So I was a little bit surprised to see that Spire disappear on the non-X six core variant. Uh, that is sort of like a little bit of a loss and chunk of value so the Ryzen 5 2600 though, still at $199, you just wanna go buy yourself a good cooler and get that thing up to four gigahertz plus, which can easily be done for an extra $30. And of course you can still couple it with the B350 and notice no detriment to performance. So I'm really liking where these new CPUs are coming into the price point, And it seems like AMD's closed the gap this time around to make the eight core more appealing in value for money. Though of course, moving on with those gaming benchmarks, it was great to see an improvement to the AMD CPUs this time around. Last year, they did get criticized for having lackluster gaming performance. This year, there's an improvement there. And of course, I got to see firsthand how much really good memory makes a difference for this architecture. Of course, it will give a boost to the Intel CPUs as well. That's not to be uh, taken away from. But another thing as well is the 8700K will still be the king for gaming. There's no denying that. My results here show that in some games as well, especially if they're single threaded IPC dependent games, the 8700K at five gigahertz is still gonna floor it when it comes to gaming. And if you're a competitive gamer and you need the best FPS possible, that's still going to be the choice for competitive gamers. But where the Ryzen comes into play is that it's soldered from the die to the IHS. You get a really good cooler, especially the $329 2700X and the productivity benchmarks beat that of the 8700K. So if you want something that's more balanced, that's gonna save you time when it comes to working and can still get up and play games really well, then the 2700X is gonna be my recommendation. 2600X is still gonna be a good buy, but since DDR4 RAM prices are still expensive, I would be personally going for the 2700X if I have to choose. And of course the 2700, it's clocked lower and it comes with the Spire RGB LED cooler, which is inferior to the Prism. And the Prism looks really good. And even if you're not going to use it on a build, you can definitely sell that thing for more than $30, that I'm sure of. Anyway guys, when it comes down to it, I know there'll probably be some people out there who are disappointed that it only gets another 200 megahertz over the 1800X on average and it only has a 3% IPC improvement. Uh, but for me, I've been harping on about the latency and the snappiness in the last year, and that to me is the biggest improvement of the 2700X. I feel like AMD have absolutely nailed it in making this CPU not only a productivity king, and especially for the money, but also making it a snappy, really low latency, fast driven CPU, one that I can certainly recommend and one that I'll definitely be putting in my main rig and making yet another switch. But before I do that, I'll be doing some very deep testing for you guys. We'll be testing some things, don't worry about that. And also before I get on out of here as well, the X470 motherboards do come with the Sense MI technology. I wasn't provided the driver uh, to install that just yet, so I will be testing that when AMD are ready to launch that, but you do get the license included with X470 motherboards. There are no B450 motherboards yet. I'm not sure if AMD plans to release them, but I'm pretty sure they will later on down the track. But of course, you can get a B350 motherboard for very cheap, update the BIOS, and get yourself really good value for money. That's still a good option available, and I like that AMD are leaving that option open to enthusiasts who want the best bang for your buck. 
And of course, in those gaming benchmarks, we did see the 2600X pull ever so slightly ahead of the 2700X. And as I said before, it's probably due to it having an allocation of more level three cache. And also, if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit that like button. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions or what you think of the Ryzen 2000 series, the new 12 nanometer Zen Plus chips. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and look forward to a lot more comparisons hitting the channel. But to quickly recap, 329 bucks, eight cores, 16 threads with the raised prism cooler, it's hitting very hard, especially since they've soldered the die to the IHS and also the 2600X as well. That's hitting hard, though I do prefer the 2700X and also the 8700K, that's not going anywhere. That's still the king of IPC and single thread performance coupled with this six cores and 12 threads. But of course, competition is here and it's happy days. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye. We're all improved and now putting this in. So AMD, uh... welcome back to Tech Yes City. Here we have the gains. Welcome back to Tech Yes City and we're going to get into the productivity and gaming benchmarks, but we, uh... So as always, the benchmarks do a big painting of that picture and what we've got here is And as always, the benchmarks do all the painting when it comes to finalizing that picture for you guys. Anyway, there it is, AMD delivering. So what can I say?